called Alexia Deirdre. I work at the Lawrence Berkeley National Lab and at the Berkeley Center for Cosmological Physics. I'm a postdoc in astrophysics, and my uh, main topic of study is cosmology. And in particular, I study uh, dark matter through an effect called gravitational lensing. So we've, we've known for quite some time now that the majority of our universe is made up of a mysterious uh, element called dark matter, which is probably some kind of particle that we have not yet detected. And it makes up uh, most of the mass in our universe. And the way the universe evolved uh, is that the dark matter became very clumpy. So it forms what we call a cosmic web of dark matter. There's blobs uh, interconnected by filaments. And these blobs can be quite massive, very, very massive structures. Uh, the effect that I study is called gravitational lensing, and this is how it works. These blobs um, deform space-time uh, around them, and the, the light, a distant photon traveling from a very distant galaxy, will actually uh, be deviated around that massive structure because of the warping of space-time. And this will lead to a change in the shapes of uh, distant background galaxies. So if we had a wallpaper of round galaxies, and then we uh, induced a gravitational lensing effect on this wallpaper, we would obtain a series of ellipses that had some kind of coherent distortion. So what I do in my research is to use this, dis this um, coherent distortion of the shapes of distant galaxies to try to recreate the, and to remap the distribution of the dark matter in the foreground. And this tells us something about how the dark matter behaves in our universe and how it evolves with uh, cosmic time. I think it makes things move at a much faster pace. Uh, for example, let's say I was studying a little patch of the sky and I needed some other information from a different telescope or a different uh, wavelength. Uh, maybe in the old days I would have had to phone a colleague and say, do you know who would have this information that I need and how would I get it? Maybe I would get it through the, through the mail two weeks later. But nowadays, all I have to do is uh, go onto Google and do a search and find which survey corresponds to the data I need and I could probably uh, download it within five, 10 minutes. So uh, the, the access to information is really key and it's really important in what we do and it makes us work a lot more efficiently. I, I work with a survey that's called the Cosmos Survey, which is a very large collaboration of um, international astrophysicists. And uh, I work with a data set that has about uh, 30 different data sets from different telescopes, including uh, the Hubble Space Telescope, uh, the Subaru Telescopes, and the Keck Telescopes. So it's a very large database. Uh, there's a web page I go to, to to look for this information. And that's just one survey among many. I would cite my prime source of inspiration would be um, a book that my father gave me by Carl Sagan, which was called The Pale Blue Dot. And uh, the cover of this book is a picture taken by the Voyager 1 spacecraft in, uh, in early 1990s. And the Voyager spacecraft traveled to the edge of our solar system or to the outer parts of our solar system and then turned around and imaged our, uh, our planet, Earth. And all we see is a tiny, tiny, tiny pale blue dot. Uh, and it's an amazing picture because it reveals to us how incredibly isolated we are and how incredibly important our planet is to us. And it's the only place we have to live on. And so this really inspired me to be interested in planetology and uh, our solar system and the question of you know, how did we end up living on this pale blue dot? And this led me to look further and further outwards till eventually I became interested in cosmology and questions regarding our universe.